It's Friday, July 15th. Time for us to say morning, Barbados. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Barbados, get up. Good morning. Welcome to the Friday, July 15th edition of Morning Barbados. I'm Katrina Marshall saying thank you for making us your first choice to start your morning off right with. Hopefully you've got a cup of something nice the way I do. And if you don't, perhaps you have nice company the way I do in the precedent one, Colin Cunningham. Morning, Colin. Good morning. TGIF. Uh, indeed it is. Friday. Good morning, Barbados. How are you doing? Yeah, guess what? Weekend is upon us. Cheers. Make sure and pace yourself. Pace yourself. <laughs> you got some days to go still. It's been one of those weeks where you think to yourself, where did it go? Actually, no, I didn't. I'm always looking forward to Friday, so I don't care where Monday, yes. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday go. <laughs> yes, but the speed at which they go past, don't you think? I thought it went really slow, actually. No, like, no, this week goodness, feels like it's flew right on by. Finishing. And for the people who have the stamina to be going to the crop over events in the evening and still making it to work early stamina, in the morning. Stamina. Stamina. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how, we, that's how we do things as a Caribbean people. Uh, Carnival, crop over, festival, whatever you want to call it, is worked into our DNA. So we somehow find the energy. And I think, to be honest, Colin, sometimes our bosses look the other way. Don't you think? I think they're out partying too. Quite possibly. Mm, in <laughs> fact, I think they party more than us. Because then, you know, nobody watches them when they're driving at 10 o'clock in the morning. Mm, quite possibly. Quite there possibly. You, you have a point there. there I didn't think about that before. So it's not that they're looking the other way. They're not even there to look. <laughs> Well, when you have a barrage of assistants and secretaries to cover for you, um, I would imagine that makes life a little bit easier. That's what I need, a barrage of secretaries. I'm going to start the application process. Um, well, do I get a shoe in if I bring you a porcelain egg cup? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to bring you one this morning, you know. <laughs> I don't like egg that much, but I would keep my egg cup on a mantelpiece, though. So they if you gave me one, it would get pride of place right up there. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And I probably have it hand-painted. See, even better. Go right at the top now. Do you know who else might be able to help you with that? Um, a pot potter named Gloria Chung. Do you remember the museum had their heritage day oh, yes, this did. week? And Gloria Chung uh, was the... Uh, All the pretty people at the museum, good morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning to Gloria Chung and to all of the staff at the Museum Histor and Historical Society. Yeah, um, if you saw the spread in the newspaper, um, she's a master potter and jeweler, and somewhere along there she manages to play badminton. But um, uh, I think the picture showed... A woman of my heart. Oh, Must right. get some sport in them. That's right. Can't she can um, just do all the work. And no, no, no. Um, I mean, she's, she represents Barbados as well. As there you go. So she takes it quite seriously. But yeah. say in Barbados, you need to run boat. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I hope that is a positive statement. Oh, yes. Okay. Most definitely. Because sometimes I misuse them. Don't worry. <laughs> I will guide you in the right cultural direction. So, yeah. Well, thank um, you. Lots happening during the day. Of course, um, Arturo Tappan and Victor Provost, from what I understand, put down a mean performance last night at Pan Fusion. To be expected. Oh, yes. Most definitely. I'm sure Mr. Provost was in fine fettle. Yeah, I'm sure he was. <laughs> <laughs> On the pan. On the pan. Mm. On the pan. What else would we be referring to? You, not me. Mm, indeed. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> so, plans for the weekend? I don't know. Uh, Zale is around this weekend, so... Oh, you know, the small I, person. Yeah, it, it all... I follow him. Yeah. You know, he's like the leader, so... Well, the only I, thing he doesn't do is drive right now. Well, seeing over that truck that you the steering wheel of the truck you drive might be a problem for him. <laughs> but he is, he is stimulated with the whole whining thing. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> so you heard it here first, Barbados. Colin Cunningham's son, Zale, has finally figured out the hands akimbo wiggle um, a little action. And, um, it must be Barbadian. I don't know. I didn't teach him that. Well, he's a Caracom child, so there must be a little flavor. Yeah, but Barbadians do it differently. Of course we do. We uh, do it best, I think. We do it best. I will say yes. Yeah, we do, we do it best. <laughs> you know, Colin, can you imagine if none of us turned up for work? It would be nice. We'd well, be out partying, <laughs> doing something. No, not quite. I not mean, nice for the bosses or well, yeah. the station. Yeah. Well, that's happened at the BBC World Service. I was actually listening for the BBC World News this morning, and I got a truncated version of it and a recording saying, due to industrial action, some In of your regular programs... Industrial action. Industrial action, action as if you would, you would at think... The at, at the beam. At the beam. You would think that everyone was happy working at what is respected as the uh, world's yeah, premier yeah, yeah. news organization. Nope, they're uh, protesting over uh, salary negotiations and, and cuts that they say so are So where they lead, we shall follow. Uh, no. I'm, I'm okay. You have your placard? No. Are you happy? 
Uh, yeah. Obviously. <laughs> I'm on my own. Yeah, well, anyway, uh, we're keeping an eye on that and a few other international news headlines. But for now, we're going to tell you what's making headlines here at home in our Morning Barbados Top Lines package. These are the stories that we will be following in more detail in our main news package at 7 o'clock at the top of the hour. So join us then. Dengue fever in Barbados is under control, despite more cases being reported this year over last year. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Joyce St. John told CBC last year Barbados felt the effects of one of the worst dengue outbreaks on record. She noted that this year so far 59 confirmed cases of dengue fever have been recorded between January and June, compared to 31 for the corresponding period last year. Family businesses in Barbados now stand to benefit from much-needed financial and management advice, which is expected to take them past the first generation. It's coming against the backdrop of information suggesting that 70% of family businesses do not continue past the first generation. KPMG and the Barbados National Bank have come together to give local family enterprises in Barbados and the rest of the Caribbean the necessary tools to succeed. Barbados is being held up by a number of countries as a model for the advancement of entrepreneurship among its people. Word of this from Professor Bob Garrett of Cass Business School in London, England. Professor Garrett is in Barbados con conducting a workshop on new forms of strategic thinking among business people while reviewing the operations of the Barbados Youth Business Trust. Professor Garrett says the review of BYBT is to ensure they have a solid strategy going forward. While Latin American economies will record stronger growth as the region continues to recover from the global recession. The Caribbean is only expected to expand by half as much this year. According to a report by a United Nations economic watchdog, while South American economies will lead the way with combined growth rates of 4 to 5 percent, the Caribbean will only muster less than 2 percent expansion. The two regions are passing a two-year milestone after they began to emerge from the worldwide doldrums in the second half of 2009. Suriname's Foreign Minister Winston Lakin has emphatically ruled out using military force to resolve the issue with its Caribbean community neighbour Guyana. The Foreign Minister described the TIGR dispute as an inheritance from the colonial past left behind when the castles and offices in Europe it was being decided what developments were suitable for developing countries. Guyana is also claiming the Tigri area known to the Guyanese as the New River Triangle which it has occupied since 1966, the year the country gained political independence from Britain. Those have been your morning Barbados top lines. Do join us at the top of the hour at 7 o'clock for our main news package. But for right now, a gentleman who's got all the details of what's happening internationally in the newspapers is Colin Cunningham. He's got a copy of the International Herald Tribune. Oh, and it's all doom and gloom. Well, not quite, but in the U.S. and in Europe, there are not happy faces walking around. Around the U.S. Capitol, officials were weighed down yesterday with the sense that they were hurtling towards a crisis in the talks on debt and deficit cutting with no clear map to show the way forward. Over in Europe, that area's festering debt crisis may well be approaching its own post-Lehman Brothers moment when fears for the unthinkable finally prompted British and American governments to take radical action and force most of their capital thin banks to accept government money whether they like it or not. And now, in an abrupt reversal, News Corporation said yesterday afternoon that Rupert Murdoch and his son James would testify next week before a British parliamentary panel looking into phone hacking. Earlier in the day, the Murdochs had sent letters to the panel, the Commons Culture Select Committee, refusing the invitation to appear. I would probably say turning down the invitation. I don't know. In the Nation newspaper, Wadada Party Lessons, it was full attendance at the annual Wadada Back to School Fet at Kensington Oval on Wednesday night. We mentioned that a little bit. On the front page is a cover of a young schoolgirl dancing with a much older man. I wonder what is going on there. Actually, no, it's Alison Hines and her husband. Look at them. They're partying. I think maybe she got a little chance to enjoy a party from the other side for the first time in a long time. She looks like she's having fun. I'm jealous. Montano, you would have seen that headline. Shepherd, that's Alan Shepherd saying it's an insult to use Marshall to push crop over. On the back page, Fidel Short, it will be big bucks for the Barbadian pacer Fidel Edwards in the Australian Big Bash 2020 league, which rolls off in December. And Brathwaite, the ball beater, also on the back page. On the front page of the advocate, young entrepreneurs must use resources. 
If you want to find out what those resources are, I guess you've got to read the story. Compliments to the chefs. You know we're talking about those peop those chefs that went and did us proud. They met with the Prime Minister and the Minister of Tourism. I wonder if they cooked for them. On the back page, Cardi, grow your or grow our own. The conditions which led to the 2008 food crisis are expected to return. So get your kitchen garden going. Some of the stories internationally and locally. And just to give you some idea of what we will be covering this morning, we talk about the dangers of smoking from a man who would know all about how the quality of your life can be depleted by consistent and continued smoking over a period of time. Um, health Alert is our segment, so we'll be talking about that. And someone who um, we're really proud of, Kimara Safri, uh, at the Homeless and Vagrant Society. And he'll be back to give us another update as to what they are doing. Uh, that's just a taste of what's going on in our first half, so don't go away. We're going to take a very short break, and we'll be back with more on this Friday edition of Morning Barbados. Morning.